Hello! This video is going to be all about the exam that is in just a couple of days. I'm going to provide some final tips, strategies, and helpful information as you are preparing for this online exam. So a couple slides just to give you more strategies with answering these free response questions. When you are answering these two questions, make sure that you are reading the question carefully and actually answering the question that is asked of you. Whether that's do you agree or disagree, Agree. Is the student correct or incorrect? Yes or no? And then justify. Make sure that you are answering the actual question and then providing your explanation. So you should always start with, I agree or I disagree. It is correct, it is incorrect, yes or no and then explain. If you do a calculation, make sure that you show your work, whether you are typing, whether you are handwriting, you need to show work for a calculation. When you are doing the calculation, you don't have to show the units throughout the entire calculation, but make sure that you are paying attention to those units. What units are they asking for? What units do you have? What units do your equations require? So make sure that you are paying attention to the units. However, you only need units on your answer. If you are given a balanced equation, make sure that you are paying attention to the mole ratios as you are doing calculations. Make sure you're also paying attention in those equations to single or double arrows. Remember that single arrows mean that the reaction goes to completion. A double arrow would mean that it is at equilibrium. So pay attention to those arrows as well. And when you are doing calculations, double and triple check your math. Avoid careless math errors and manipulation errors. So make sure that when you are rearranging the ideal gas law, make sure that you are rearranging it correctly if you're trying to solve for N. For example, it should be PV over RT, not the other way around. Also avoid math mistakes. So when you're solving something with the ideal gas law and you're manipulating an equation, make sure that your entire numerator is plugged into your calculator with parentheses. Your entire denominator is plugged in par to parentheses just to avoid any math mistakes. And then finally, make sure that you are giving the readers what they want. So the readers are the ones grading your test. Make sure that you're giving them what they want. If they ask for bond angles, that's a number. If they ask for molecular geometry, you should be talking about tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, seesaw, T-shape. Hybridization is SP, SP2, SP3. So make sure that you are giving the readers what they want. More strategies for answering free response questions. So if you must explain or justify your answer, like I had said on the last slide, make sure to state your answer before explaining or justifying. If you are handwriting or even if you're typing, underline your response if you need to. Underline your agree, disagree, and correct, and then explain explain but make sure you're answering the question and then providing the explanation or the justification. So make sure that your justification mentions specifically what the question wants. So for example, if the question says justify based on Q versus K, make sure that somewhere in there you're talking about Q versus K. You can show calculations to help your explanations and to help your justifications, but just make sure that you are providing a justification based on what they want if they state that in the question. Make sure to talk about the why when explaining. So don't just state the facts. Remember that periodic trends are not an explanation. You can't just say that francium is larger. You have to say why. So make sure you're talking about that why. Talk about energy levels, effective nuclear charge. Make sure you're actually talking about why something happens and not just here's what happens. Uh, when you're looking at intermolecular forces, make sure that you are including all intermolecular forces for each substance that the question is looking at. So if you are comparing cyclohexane and glucose, make sure that you are talking about all of the intermolecular forces in cyclohexane and all the intermolecular forces in glucose, and then you're comparing what it wants you to compare. Don't confuse a covalent bond with an intermolecular force. So remember that a covalent bond is inside a molecule and intermolecular forces between two molecules. Now, when you're looking at different elements or ions, make sure you're talking about specific details of a atomic structure, compare and contrast if you need to. Like I had said, a periodic trend is not a justification. You have to talk about why it works like it does. So make sure that you're talking about protons, valence electrons, orbitals, energy levels, electrons repelling, Coulomb's law. So there are a lot of different ways that you can explain. Make sure that you are explaining. So since I just mentioned Coulomb's law, I do want to talk about just a few things to keep in mind as you're answering these free response questions. Coulomb's law is something that can be useful when discussing a variety of topics. So Coulomb's law is looking at the attraction between 
two atoms, two particles, it could be a proton and an electron, but it's looking at the force between two charged particles. K is just a constant, so Q1 and Q2, those are the charges, R is the radius or the distance between those two charged particles. Coulomb's law is useful when discussing lattice energy. So lattice energy is the energy required to break an ionic bond, breaking the ionic lattice. A lattice energy is comparing the strengths. So maybe you're looking at the lattice energy between magnesium oxide and sodium oxide. And so then you have to think about the charges. The higher the charges, the stronger the attraction. You also can think about the size of the ions. The closer, the smaller the ions are, the closer they are together and the stronger the attraction. You can also use Coulomb's law when you're looking at ion dipole forces. So the strength of attraction between an ion and water. You could look at intermolecular forces, covalent bonds, and you could also think about periodic trends and PES diagrams because you're thinking about the attraction between the positively charged nucleus and those negatively charged valence electrons. When you're using the ideal gas law, a few things to remember. Make sure you're converting your temperature. So don't miss a point because you didn't convert Celsius to Kelvin. K equals C plus 273. That is on your equation sheet as well, but make sure that that should be the first thing that you're converting. Pay attention to your units of R. All of your values of R are on the equation sheet as well. If you're using 0 0.08206, you should have liters, ATM, moles, and Kelvin. And then remember that you can only use molar volume. You can only use 22.4 liters is one mole when you are at STP standard temperature and pressure, which is 273 Kelvin and 1 ATM. Finally, net ionic equations. So when you are writing net ionic equations, you do not need the states of matter. So you can still get the point even if you don't include the states of matter. Make sure the equation is balanced for both atoms and charge. So make sure that you're balancing using coefficients for your atoms, but you're also making sure that the charge is equal on both sides. Balancing charge is when we balance redox reactions. So you're adding electrons, canceling them out. Strong electrolytes, remember that those dissociate into ions. So strong electrolytes are strong acids, strong bases, soluble ionic substances. Remember the solubility rules that you are required to know is anything with potassium, nitrate, ammonium, and sodium will be 100% soluble and will split apart into its ions. Make sure you have your strong acids written down, your strong bases. Remember, make the lowercase b on the periodic table when combined with hydroxide. So remember that strong electrolytes will dissociate. If it's a solid, if it's a liquid, if it's a gas, those stay together. Remember, only aqueous substances can dissociate. Weak acids, weak bases, even though they are aqueous, stay together as a molecule. So some final reminders. Practice, practice, practice with the exam demo to make sure that your device is functioning properly and that you can submit your responses appropriately. By device functioning properly, make sure you have the extensions disabled. Grammarly is the one that they know of right now. You need to make sure Grammarly is disabled, but also that you can submit your responses appropriately and in enough time. As you're looking at submitting your responses, make sure you know which of the three methods you will be submitting, whether you will be copying and pasting, whether you will be attaching a text file, or whether you will be submitting photos. Make sure you know how you will be getting your photos or your PDF from your phone to your computer if that is how you will have the exam set up, whether you're using email, whether you're using the Drive app on your phone, whichever way you prefer, that's how, make sure that that's how you're practicing. If you are submitting photos, make sure they're in the correct file. You can only have JPEG or PNG. So if you have an iPhone, a newer iPhone that uses the HEIC format, you have to change that. If you are submitting a PDF, whether it is handwritten or whether it is a downloaded Google Doc, if you are submitting a PDF, you must use option two, which is the uh, attach as text or submit as text. You have to use that when you're submitting a PDF, even if you hand wrote your work. If submitting a PDF, you have to attach it as text. And then remember that you can take the exam on any device. So if you are struggling getting your handwritten work from your phone to your computer, you can take the exam on your phone. You just have to open your e-ticket on your phone, access the exam that way. If that's what you prefer, you can do that. It might just require more scrolling, but practice the exam demo on your phone then if that's what you're planning. Make sure that you stop with five minutes left to upload. This has already been an issue with the AP Physics C exam. If you are trying to work through and you only leave yourself one minute to upload, you will not get your responses uploaded in time. So you would rather have three-fourths of your question be scored than get a zero on one of the questions. So when that timer turns red and you have five minutes left, stop your work and begin the upload process. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that any tabs that you have open in Chrome or in whatever browser you're in, they cannot be collaborative tabs. So if your cheat sheets are in Google Docs, make sure that no one else is on that Google Doc or download it as a PDF. You cannot have any collaborative documents open when you are taking this exam. They recommend that you take it in Chrome. You cannot use Internet Explorer for this exam. And then lastly, make sure that you go through the exam day checklist. Now that you have your e-ticket, you can start going through that exam day checklist now. Everything you need is at cb.org backslash AP 2020. Your e-tickets were emailed out today. If you did not receive your e-ticket, you can find it at myap.collegeboard.org and you'll be able to find your AP ID the link to the exam, everything else that you need is in that e-ticket. You do not have to print it out, but you do need to make sure that you have your AP ID ready to go because when you are going through and preparing, whether you're handwriting or whether you're typing, you need to have your AP ID and your initials at the top of each page. Here are some useful resources. If you are creating a PDF from handwritten work, which remember you can do now, there are two different ways you can create a PDF from handwritten work. If you have an iPhone, you can actually use the Notes app in an iPhone to create a PDF from handwritten work. And the reason that I'm giving you these resources is because when you create a PDF from a photo, it makes the, the image significantly more bright, easy to read. I recommend if you are handwriting just to practice creating a PDF from your handwritten work. If it's too much, that's fine. You don't have to, but just make sure that, that your image file is easy to read and not blurry. You also can look at Mr. 26 video on how to email PDFs or images to yourself. So take it from your phone to your Chromebook and he actually goes through the exam demo and he shows you. So this video is extremely useful to find the step-by-step -step for getting images or PDFs from your phone to your Chromebook. I created this video on how to disable Chrome extensions as well, if you're not sure how to do that. And then finally, there is this last video from another teacher who created a walkthrough and tips for uploading to the exam platform. So I just want to end this video with telling you that you've got this. I'm confident that you know this information, you've been practicing free response questions and being timed all year. I am proud of you no matter what. I know this is not ideal with how you would take the AP exam, but I'm very proud of what you have done over the last seven, eight months. But just remember that you've been working all year for this. You've practiced being timed. You've practiced free response questions. And no matter what happens with this test, I am extremely proud of everything that you have done. I know that you'll be great no matter what. Just remember it's okay. It's okay if you don't finish a question. It's okay if you only get six of the eight parts done. It's okay. Just know that, that you've got this. I am very confident in your abilities. And I just want to say good luck to you. And Wrigley also says good luck. So I put this little picture of Wrigley on here as well. Just know that we're both cheering for you and we are both rooting for you on Thursday.